Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can make Windows XP look and feel a lot more like Windows 9X and Windows 2000. And this is all made possible through a free piece of software called the Inexperience Patcher. It's on screen right now and I'm going to have the link to this DeviantArt page down below in the video description if you guys want to go ahead and actually download this and check it out for yourselves. Now I know that some people out there will say, oh, can't you just change the Luna theme over to the classic theme uh, to make Windows XP look more like these earlier versions of Windows? Well, yeah, you could, but you're not really going to be getting the full effect. I mean, you're still going to have the XP logo on the start button and, you know, throughout the system, and all of the icons aren't going to change. With the inexperienced patcher here, it actually gives you a very, very close recreation of some of these older Windows versions. Now, yes, not everything is going to be completely exact, but... Uh, I think it does a pretty good job at actually making XP look more like Windows 9X and Windows 2000. Now this is not a new piece of software at all. As you can see on the screen here, this was published, or it was first published on DeviantArt on January 20th, 2006. But before that, it was actually released on the NeoWin forums, that's where I believe this was first posted. Um, and it, it even goes back a year earlier, back to 2005. Uh, so that's when this was first released. Now the latest release is from 2007. That's when this was last updated, and it was essentially updated to work with Windows XP Service Pack 3. Now, this supports all versions of Windows XP except for the 64-bit version of XP, and it also works with Server 2003. So this is where you can go to get some more information about it, and the author basically tells you exactly what it is, how it actually works, and there is a, a readme file that actually contains all of this same information, so we're going to go ahead and actually jump right into that. So when you download the zip file, which you can do by clicking this download button right here, uh, you will get this zip file right here. When you extract that, uh, these are the two files that you're going to get, and we're going to look at the readme document first before we actually jump into the installer. So the readme document right here kind of gives you, again, the same information that was posted on the DeviantArt page. It also gives you a version history, so you can see that the first version, as I said, was from February 5th, 2005, so about a year before this was posted on DeviantArt. And the latest version was released on March 17th, 2007, uh, and it is 0.7.2. Now, the author does say in the installer notes here that the appeal of something like this is somewhat limited, but I expect there's a few people other than me who might want to use the older style, either out of nostalgia, because they find it to be cleaner and more usable, or simply out of a preference for the pixel art style and that is absolutely true and when I first heard about this from the viewer who actually submitted this to me over on Twitter I thought it would be perfect to showcase on this channel to you guys one of the other neat things is that the installer program for this patcher is actually derived from XPIs or XPIs however you pronounce it which I actually did a video on a couple of years ago and that piece of software it was essentially a patch that updated a lot of the icons in Windows XP to give it a newer look you <laughs> Uh, so this basically does the opposite of that, and that's why the author even up here calls it the anti-XPIs, because instead of making these icons look newer and more up-to-date, it kind of brings them back in the past a little bit, back to the Windows 9X, Windows 2000 era. So that's actually really, really awesome. So you can read more about the in installer notes and the actual version history and kind of what all was changed in this readme file right here, and the uh, credits down here. But we're going to move on to actually installing this program. So we're going to run the inexperience 0.7.0. To set up file right here. So the first thing you might notice about the installer is actually this graphic on the left side, which actually calls itself Microsoft Windows 2002, which I will get into later on in the video. So the first thing that you have to read are the license terms right here, which is actually, according to the author, a mockery of a license agreement. So you can read this if you want uh, and, you know, click next. And Next up here, you have the same README documentation that we read before. It's just kind of contained in the installer right here. Um, and we're going to click Next, as we've obviously already read that. Now you have a couple of options that you, that you can specify. You can choose what files you want the program to make modifications to. And then you also have the option to automatically reload on boot. And these are all checked by default, so we're going to leave it like that. And we're going to click on Install. And it will begin to actually patch these system files. Now you'll notice, like I said before, this installer utilizes the XBI's installer system. You can actually see that evident right down here at the bottom. All right, so the installer has just finished up here. We're going to click on next and we're going to reboot the system to allow all the changes to take effect. 
All right, so we've logged back in here, and it might look like uh, right off the bat that nothing has changed. But if you start to look a little bit closer, for example, at the recycle bin and these folder icons up here, you can see that they've been changed to uh, their Windows 2000 counterparts. Same thing with some of the icons down here in the system tray. You can see like these shield icons are both, you know, the older shield icons. And if we go into the start menu, you'll notice that we have old icons all across the board, even in all programs. But for the actual theme to change, uh, we have to actually do that ourselves by right-clicking on the desktop, going into Properties, and then uh, changing the theme from the Windows XP Luna theme to the Windows Classic theme. You can see we've got that uh, static blue wallpaper. We could even, if we wanted to make it look more like 95 or 98, we can change it to that default green wallpaper. Uh, the Start button down here has been changed to the Classic Windows logo. We can open that up. You'll see that it's still in that two-column layout, which was introduced with XP, but we can also change that back to the one-column layout by going into the taskbar properties, go to the start menu tab and change this to the classic start menu and hit apply. When we do that, uh, you'll see that it, we now have the uh, classic one column start menu. And you'll notice that just like in the installer, it's actually calling itself Windows 2002 Professional in the sidebar here. Now this is also evident in Winver. If we go to run here and uh, type in Winver and press OK, and you'll see that uh, in the About Windows dialog box here, the banner up here has been changed to say Microsoft Windows 2002, which is essentially a modified Windows 2000 logo. Now you might be asking yourself where the author gets the 2002 from, well, it's most likely from going into the system properties and Windows XP up here identifies itself as Microsoft Windows XP Professional version 2002 and then whatever service pack that you have. So that's probably where the author is getting that from. Now, like I mentioned earlier on in the video, one of the big things that this pack does is it changes the vast majority of the icons. Uh, so we can go into the start menu here and you can see that all of these icons have been changed in the one column layout here to their Windows 2000 counterparts. Um, now, not every single one of them has been changed. Obviously, whatever third-party programs you have installed, like I have CMonkey for the web browser, that's not going to change. MSN Explorer, that hasn't changed, but the vast majority of them do. We can also uh, go into my computer. You can see that in here, we've got the older hard drive icon, the older CD drive icon. Now, the layout of Windows Explorer does not change. It's still got the XP layout with the sidebar over here, but all the icons have been changed. Even the Windows flag up here has been changed as well. Now, going into local disk C, another thing that does not change is the uh, these files are hidden dialog. Here you see we still have the newer icon right here. So this does not get changed. But when we actually go into like the Windows folder, you can see that all of these uh, icons here for the most part have been changed. We can also see more of this by going into control panel. And in the control panel, you'll notice that, uh, yes, all of the icons in control panel uh, have been changed as well. Now, even with the category view here, which Windows 2000 did not have, uh, all these icons have been changed, but we can go to the classic view here and actually, you know, here it's going to look more like Windows 2000 or a previous version of Windows. And if we go into taskbar and start menu, I mean, you'll see that the images right here get changed. They're not normally like this uh, in a unpatched version of Windows XP. And I already showed you guys the system dialog, but this is identical to what you would see in Windows 2000 or in Windows 98 or some other version of Windows 9X. Uh, this image right here is exactly the same. Uh, all the icons for all these tasks have been changed. So yes, like I said, one of the big features of this patch is changing, again, not all of the icons, but the vast majority of them. I mean, you can see here in control panel, Windows Firewall retains its old icon. So there are going to be some that do not get changed. So overall, guys, I think that this piece of software does a very good job at mimicking these older versions of Windows. And you might even be able to fool somebody into thinking that you're running Windows 2000 or even Windows 98 or 95 using this patch. Now, yes, there are a couple of big giveaways, mainly the Windows 2002 branding, but I still think this program does a very good job at what it intends to do. Again, I'm going to have the link down below, and I mean, you guys saw how easy that this is to do. I literally installed this in like two minutes, and I was up and running with it. So if you guys want to go ahead and actually check it out, uh, just follow the link in the video description. Uh, but guys, that is going to go ahead and wrap it up for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribe down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do every single week on this channel. 
And as always, guys, if you have any comments or questions or even video suggestions for me, be sure to leave those down below as I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And I just want to thank you all so much for watching and for your continued support here on the channel. And I will see you all in the next video.